Hi, everyone. I wanted to take just a few moments this morning and talk about 2 Timothy 3.16 and kind of how to rebuttal that when you're slapped with it. What I mean is this. If you're somebody who's in the New Covenant camp or you're somebody who is really just Jesus-focused, grace-focused, you enjoy your freedom in Christ, it is inevitable that at some point somebody is going to slap you with 2 Timothy 3.16. Now, and it may have happened to you already. It happened to me last week, actually. It happens to me all the time. So I have a system in place that I kind of use to push back on this a little bit. And I just thought I'd share it with you in case this happens to you. And I think it could be helpful. So if you don't know that address, 2 Timothy 3.16, you certainly do know the verse. And you're, you're going to know, you're going to recognize it the second that I, I speak it. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. All scripture is God-breathed. I'm sure you've heard that. It is in every church constitution, and it is a favorite of legalists. They love hitting us with that because they look at New Covenant Christianity as immature. They say, look, you're, you're ignoring two-thirds of the Bible. You're focusing solely on the New Testament. I personally have been accused of worshiping God's grace and not God. And they'll say stuff like that. You're, you're focusing solely on grace. You're, you're ignoring everything else. You're ignoring all the wrath of God, everything we're taught in the Old Testament. You're saying, well, that none of that applies. That's Judaism. And you're just stuck in the new. And that's when they 2 Timothy 3.16 you. So just like last time I did one of these videos, I said, you know, you're going to get Matthew 5.17. And that's I did not come to abolish the law, but fulfill it. And we talked about that. You're going to get 2 Timothy 3.16. So how do, how do we respond to that? Well, this is how I rebut it, all right? I say, okay, I hear you on that. And it, yeah, absolutely, it does say that. But what does 2 Timothy 3.15 say? And, I, and I, I'll find different ways to craft that. I usually don't try to make somebody quote scripture back to me because that, that comes off as aggressive. It comes off as I have some sort of superiority complex almost, like I'm, I'm, I'm being condescending. I'm looking down at them. So instead of wording it like that, I'll try to season it with salt and I'll say, okay, so what, what are our thoughts on, on 2 Timothy 3.15 then? And I might even give it to them. You know, if, if it's somebody that I think is going to kind of go off, I'll probably even give it to them. So 2 Timothy 3.15 is Paul speaking to Timothy and this is what he says. He says, and how from infancy you have had the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. The holy scriptures, the Old Testament, is able to make you wise for salvation, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So do you see the context there? He's saying, yes, the Old Testament is useful. Paul uses the Old Testament all the time. I mean, throughout all of his letters, he uses the Old Testament as a proof text. He quotes the law. He quotes the prophets. He quotes Psalms. He quotes everything. Everything in the Old Testament, he uses it to point forward. It is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and instructing, training in righteousness. It is useful for that. It is useful to make you wise for salvation, which is through faith in Jesus Christ. That's the point of it. So that's the context of 2 Timothy 3.16. Not that the Old Testament needs to be mixed in with, you know, the Old Covenant and the New Covenant need to be mixed in, and we need to just try to somehow make this wacky Franken covenant and apply it to ourselves. That's not what he's teaching there. He's, he's, he's showing you the purpose of it. And this is how you use it, Timothy. Incidentally, this is Paul's last letter to Timothy. And this is kind of his, his pretty much his farewell. It's believed that he was executed shortly after this, but he's giving instructions to Timothy, who is now going to kind of, he's kind of passing the baton to him and saying, you know, I've, I've done this. I've, I've run the race. I fought the good fight. And here's some, here's a variety of instructions and also here's what to do with with what's been written in the past the, the holy scriptures you know them and here's how to use them here's how to teach people with them that's the context there also really quickly let's just look at 17 too 17 says so that the servant of god may be thoroughly equipped for every good work and sometimes they'll quote that when when you get second timothy 3 16 sometimes they'll use that and sometimes they won't but again, it goes back to that context. The Old Testament is able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. It is able to teach you, to instruct you, and it is able to equip you thoroughly for every good work. It is able to do that. There's wisdom in the Old Testament. There's Look at Psalms and Proverbs. There's tons of wisdom. Always has to be viewed through the lens of the cross. And that's actually what Paul is saying here. So when somebody hits you with this, they're just wrong with the way they're using it. They're just they're just wrong with that. And I think verses 15 and 17 really speak to that. Now, finally, I want to leave you with this. 
In the book of Romans, there exists a verse which is so similar to 2 Timothy 3.16, but yet it's never used. If you look in um, church constitutions, which I, I do read actually quite a bit, and just, just for perspective, not because I'm like trying to criticize them or anything, but I do read them for perspective. Always, They always use 2 Timothy 3.16 when they talk about how they view the scriptures. They always use that. They never use Romans 15.4. And I think Romans 15.4 is just as important to include there, if not more important. Because Romans 15.4, again written by Paul, gives you the purpose of the Old Testament, or at least how he, how he views it, how he uses it. This is the purpose of the Old Testament. And it says this, For everything written in the past was written to teach us. So through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the, through the encouragement that they provide, we might have hope. Through the endurance taught in the scriptures and through the encouragement that they provide, we might have hope. The Old Testament teaches us that God is faithful, that God keeps his word, that God fulfills his promises. That's, that's what the Old Testament teaches us. We can find, we can, we can see endurance through, through people of faith in the Old Testament, and we can actually have hope in that. Again, a proof text. The Old Testament is showing us God is who he says he is. He is able to do what he says he can do, and he will do it. Look at Hebrews chapter 11. And look at how the author of Hebrews uses the Old Testament by faith. And he lists all the Old Testament greats, and here's what they did. But yet none of them received what was promised, because only together with us could they ever be made perfect. The new covenant is superior to the old covenant. These Old Testament greats were looking forward. They were looking forward to the time of the fulfillment of this promise, which is the new covenant. And only together with us were they ever made perfect. So we can learn from them. Well, absolutely. We can have encouragement through their endurance. We, we can do that. We can glean that from them. But we're not them. And we're not there. We're on this side of the cross. And again, that's what Paul's saying in Romans 15, 4. So in conclusion, uh, you know, if somebody 2 Timothy 3, 16 is you, I, I would probably try to commit to memory 15 and 17, 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 17. I would probably try to do that just for your own benefit. And so you can kind of gently showing them love kind of rebuttal that a little bit and say, okay, well, I, I'm not sure we're looking at all of it here when we're just, we're just quoting that. I think there's more here. And then I'd also, um, I'd also kind of be familiar with Romans 15, four. And that's something I've been working on this last couple of weeks because I have been, I have been second Timothy three sixteen to death. I just had a really bad one last week, actually. <laughs> so, so th these are just, they're just good tools. They're just good verses to know. They're, they're kind of good ones to have, have, you know, on, on retainer, in case, if and when, you know, like I said, if you're someone who enjoys your freedom in Christ, if and when this happens. Thanks, guys. Uh, I really appreciate it. Really appreciate the, the feedback I've been getting on these videos. So easiest way to contact me is on thewayministries.net. Just go over to the contact tab, shoot me an email. There is a link to thewayministries.net on my Instagram profile. My name is Jeremiah. I appreciate it, guys. See you later.